Hey everybody, Steve here, and this video I want to pass along some information that can be very useful um, because it comes from the Bible and we know that God's Word says that He has given us everything that we need for an abundant life. However, the abundant life that we are to walk in as believers, according to the Bible, Jesus said that we'll be persecuted, we'll undergo trials and tribulations, uh, we have to be obedient, we have to count the cost, uh, we have to die to self, examine ourselves in the light of God's Word, and we need to be obedient. And we're obedient not because of a list of rules that we have to do so we can make it into heaven, because that would be grace by, or uh, enter heaven through works, but because we do these good works because God has made us a new creature in Jesus Christ, and that His law is written on our hearts, and we renew our minds in following Him and doing His good works instead of our rotten, fleshly, sinful desire uh, stuff that we want to do. But it's interesting because in this age of American Christianity to where it's all about getting your best life now, uh, it's not about persecution, it's not about persevering, it's not about dying to self or examining yourself in the light of God's Word, it's not being uh, set apart or holy and be aliens and strangers in this world of sin, greed, and corruption, but rather taking the hard road, doing the hard ride over the easy wrong. We're compromising. Um, there's just too many churches, there's too many pastors, there's too many uh, believers that are trying to follow the easy, broad road, and it doesn't lead to the narrow gate of salvation, but it go actually goes down to destruction. Now, there's something I want to pass on from a brother, and uh, yeah, this is, other people have seen this before too, that Paul resorts to character metaphors and to help explain or give a picture of how our Christian walk should be with Jesus Christ. And I just want to go over some of these things. Uh, there's 14 of these. Uh, Christians are, of course, to be new creatures in Christ, but they're also supposed to be soldiers. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 3, uh, like a single-minded soldier, we should respond to the orders of our commanding officer, the Lord Jesus, with unquestioning obedience. This reminds me immediately of Noah, who was told to uh, build an ark, something that, you know, crazy, no one's ever done before, and to preach the gospel, preach the message, repent. And Noah did not have one convert. But Noah was obedient to God, unquestionably, in the fact that he preached for about 120 years, and even though he didn't have a single convert, he continued to be obedient to God and build the ark. Um, the other one that Paul refers to as a Christian as farmers, 2 Timothy 2, verse 6, farmers labor, labor strenuously and consistently in order to reap a fruitful harvest. We also must work hard in serving the Lord. It's interesting that in American Christianity, we get to the point of where people don't want to work hard. They don't want to minister. They don't want to witness or testify of Jesus Christ. They don't want to give as they, they see need outside the walls of their church. They just want to write that check, put it in the offering plate, and boom, I'm done. Uh, that's not what a farmer does. A farmer works seven days a week. Uh, Paul refers to us as athletes, the Christians are athletes, 2 Timothy 2.5, athletes follow strict training rules so as to avoid being disqualified from their race. We must display a similar measure of self-control, discipline, and uh, tenacity, and uh, focus on what we're supposed to do so that we're not swayed by the world. It also says that we're supposed to be workers, 2 Timothy 2.15, our work is to rightly divide or correctly handles God's word so it is to avoid shame. Now I'd also add to this that any work that we do use or do uh, here on earth is to be to the Father and to do His will and His good works. Um, it's not to be empty vain works, but it's rather to be working uh, amongst those around us. Um, and again, when you look at when you have a job, typically you work five days a week, but as high priests, as we are called in God's word, uh, that service is 24-7. It says we are vessels, 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21. We must take care to keep ourselves pure like a clean dish so that we will be useful for the master and his use. 
Uh, so again, being a vessel, we're no longer filled with our desires and our will and the things that we want to do, but rather we have laid down our lives just as Jesus Christ laid down his uh, so we can do the will of the Father and pour ourselves out to those around us. Calls us to be fishers of men, Matthew 4.19. As fishermen, we are called to catch men with the good news of Jesus Christ and preach the whole gospel. We are referred to as salt, Matthew 5.13. As salt, we are to act as godly preservative in an evil society. Moreover, we make people thirsty to know their creator. And we also see that salt has so many other applications to preserve and to help uh, fight off uh, disease and, and all kinds of other things. But it really seasons and sets the bland things uh, the sin of the world is really bland, and it's only here for a little while, but the salt of God's word, it lasts for such a long time. It refers to us as light, Matthew 5, 14 through 16, as light. We point the way to reconciliation with God as we reflect God's character, for he is light, John 1, 7. And so in that, uh, if, we're, if he is the light, and we're not to hide our light under a bushel. So if you're the type of Christian that does not witness, does not testify, does not give as they see need, does not, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, does not pray for, for them or the, the lost uh, or the believers in the church, you know, there's something that, you, that you're missing. Your light isn't shining, then you're not doing something right. We're referred to as branches in John 15, 5. As branches, we bear godly fruit as long as we are attached to the vine of Christ. We are also to hold towards the sound doctrine of God's word because you can't bear good fruit and have rotten doctrine. We have to have sound doctrine. We have to have good fruit. Uh, the two cannot be separated. Uh, again, that goes back to uh, warning about false prophets, but we are supposed to be fruitful. We're called to be stewards, 1 Corinthians 4, 1. And two, like administrators, we have responsibilities to manage. God will evaluate how we handle the resources he has given us. We are told to be stewards. We see that also in God's word, where the things that we have are no longer our own because God has given us everything. We can't, there's nothing that we can give ourselves. Uh, we have no power to do so. So everything that we have, our time, our money, our talents, uh, we need to understand and realize that we're stewards and he put us in charge of those things to minister here on earth but i think a lot of us have gotten to the point of where you know we're getting really greedy and we're we're kind of taking that for ourselves we're also referred to as ambassadors second corinthians 5 20 we are representatives of god's kingdom to the lost citizens of this world but a lot of us uh, unfortunately in american christianity are laying down that duty and that charge and that uh, we don't want to be ambassadors if it requires us to step out in faith or to do the will of the Father. We're also called to be living stones, 1 Peter 2, 5. In former days, God dwelt in a physical temple. Now he dwells in his people, the church. Jesus is supposed to be in us. We're supposed to be in him and have that intimate relationship so that we can shine forth the light of the world or the gospel of Jesus Christ through a changed life. And the evidence of that is a new nature that continues on to walk in holiness. Uh, we're called to be priests, 1 Peter 2, 5, 9, and 10. Uh, like priests, we have a privilege of approaching nearer to God and responsibility of helping others and reconciling themselves to him. Priests also serve 24-7, 365, and their inheritance is in heaven and their reward is in heaven. So be careful about the rewards that you seek and don't let them be here on earth because all our giving is supposed to be done in secret and he will be our reward. Uh, we're also supposed to be sojourners. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 11, as children of God, we do not belong to this world. This world is not our home and we are only passing through. In other words, we are to be aliens and strangers in this world because and the world's going to be amazed because if you are a true believer, then you're not going to dive into the sin or the same fleshly pursuits that the rest of the world does. Um, there's so much more that we're called to do in God's word, but we need to examine ourselves in that light and to see if we're living up to his standard and if we're responding to the Holy Spirit's conviction for things that we need to lay down so that we can conform to God's image and we can go from glory to glory and that we can renew our mind and that if we can hide God's word in our heart that we might not sin against him to do the will of the Father so we can minister to those around us outside of church. Think about it. If you only go to church, what are you going to do the other six days of the week and how are you ministering to God and those around you? Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to share that. Take care. God bless. Peace.